welcome to Erudite News Hour, MTM TV's news magazine. I am Karika McGregor Clue. Coming up in the news, South Africa is seeing more cases of Omicron subvariant, monitoring it. Storm expected to glaze Pennsylvania, New England in ice. Christian school teacher fired over nasty anti-Asian rant. As Omicron peaks, the U.S. healthcare system is left broken beyond repair. 14-year-old Jamaican-born girl shot and killed in Canada. FEMA preparing for evolving natural disasters. We go right now for a short break, but stay tuned. The news when we return. Welcome back. South Africa entered a fourth wave of COVID-19 infections driven by Omicron late last year, shortly after alerting the world to the emergence of the highly transmissible variant. Daily infections started to decline from mid-December after hitting a record of more than 26,000, and they have stabilized in recent weeks at about 3,000 new cases a day. Health Minister Joe Fala said the country was not out of the fourth wave and there could be a fifth wave closer to winter. He said the past two weeks had been a bit of stalemate in terms of new cases. There's no serious decline and yet no worrying rise in infections, he said, adding that the opening of schools and increased movement after the holidays could be reasons why there had not been a larger drop in new infections. They want us that the variants would generally be more transmissible, but uh, most of the time they would be less severe. Today, as we enter the fourth wave with a new variant, we can see confirmation of this warning. Meanwhile, a major winter storm that already cut electric power to about 350,000 homes and businesses from Texas to the Ohio Valley was set to leave Pennsylvania and New England glazed in ice and smothered in snow Friday, forecasters said. The storm disrupted flights at major hubs in the U.S. on Friday morning, including airports in New York City, Boston, and Dallas. Rick Otto, meteorologist for the National Weather Services in College Park, Maryland, said more snow was forecasted, but it was the ice that threatened to wreak havoc on travel and electric service in the Northeast before the storms head out to sea late Friday and Saturday. Snow is a lot easier to plow than ice. The icy weather is blamed for widespread power outages in Memphis, Tennessee area, where more than 125,000 homes and businesses were without power Friday morning. Nearly 85,000 homes and businesses in Ohio were without electricity. Many schools and businesses remained closed Friday in areas hit by the wintry weather a day earlier because roads remained icy and the temperatures never rose above freezing. And in other news, a California teacher was fired and her husband, a city official, was placed on leave after video footage of their racist anti-Asian tirade against another couple went viral over the weekend. This racist couple started calling us racial slurs out of nowhere and blamed Asians for starting COVID. They continued to say racist comments loudly for us to hear, so we confronted them. Are you saying those words towards us? Yeah, we're not even Chinese, by the way. Yeah, maybe. Could be. Yeah, America is a free country. Yep. Go back to China. Yep, thank you. Linfield Christian School, where Sandra Miller worked, boasts a mission to develop and inspire students to know Jesus Christ as Lord, to love others as themselves, and to grow in knowledge and in skill in order that they may serve the Lord and the world through their character and leadership. In response to the video, the Independent College Preparatory School released this statement on January 31. Linfield is aware of the video involving Ms. Sandra Miller. The statement read, after speaking with Ms. Miller regarding the incident, Linfield has terminated her employment immediately. 
the statements made by Ms. Miller do not reflect the beliefs of Linfield, are inconsistent with Linfield's mission statement, and fail to meet the behavior Linfield expects employees to model for its students. She wasn't alone in being reprimanded. Roger Miller was ultimately placed on administrative leave from his job as Coronado's Director of Recreation and Golf Services. Coronado City Manager Tina Friend said this in a statement. The city of Coronado does not tolerate any form of discrimination. The allegations are extremely serious and do not reflect the city's culture and values, which are based on professionalism, service, and respect. We go now for a short break. More in the news when we return. Continuing in the news, uh, despite COVID hospitalizations trending downward, 80% of hospitals across the country are under high or extreme stress. Uh, while some health experts have predicted that the worst of the pandemic is behind us, uh, the ripple effects of the virus, such as its impact on patients uh, needing care for other issues, uh, continue to test the limits uh, of the U.S. healthcare system and its providers. Uh, most people got into healthcare because they wanted to help people and to make a difference. And I think at this point, it's just broken beyond repair, said Dr. Brian Ressler, 36, who has worked in emergency medicine for seven years. Across the country, the daily average of COVID-19 cases and daily average of hospitalizations due to the virus has decreased by 49% and 16% respectively over the past two weeks, according to the New York Times data. Despite those positive trends, 80% of U.S. hospitals in the last week of January were under high or extreme stress, meaning that more than 10% of their hospitalizations were due to COVID-19, according to data compiled by National Public Radio. Moreover, a 14-year-old Jamaican-born girl was shot and killed in mysterious circumstances at an apartment building in Mississauga in Ontario, Canada on Tuesday. The deceased has been identified as Tafash Riley, otherwise called Lily. According to a report from Canada's CTV News, Tavash migrated to Canada from Jamaica with her parents and her brother in 2012. The Peel Regional Police said they were called to the apartment building sometime after 9 p.m. Tuesday after a resident found the teen in the stairwell on the third floor suffering from a bullet wound. Medical personnel later pronounced her dead at the scene. The police are treating the teenager's death as suspicious, but the circumstances under which she died are not clear. Tafashi's older brother spoke to CTV's news, but did not reveal his identity or voice on camera. The report, however, said that he and his family were in shock at her demise. And finally, in 2021, more than 688 Americans lost their lives to natural disasters, more than double the number of fatalities from 2020. In a telling comparison, the numbers for 2021 alone are almost equal to those from the entire decade of the 1980s. To respond to the increasing frequency and evolving potency of natural disasters, the Federal Emergency Management Agency relies on three key steps. The first thing is understanding the threats and hazards that impact the community. Second on the list is constant communication and training with state, local, tribal, and territorial partners. The third critical element is proactively and aggressively responding to whatever the event is, said Mary Ann Tierney, Regional Administrator for FEMA Region 3, in an interview. 
In this era of evolving natural disasters, FEMA's leadership believes it is more important than ever for disaster response organizations at the federal, state, and the local levels to recognize that each community they serve is unique and it needs a response tailored to their specific needs. The public, she said, plays a key role by informing FEMA of what they need and expect in a disaster. As we become a more connected society, communications technology has become increasingly important for people in all walks of life, especially during disasters. She reminds us that technology is an enabler, and if we lose access to our fancy crisis management software, we should always remember that basic human interaction is the ultimate backup communications system. Now to end the news, here are the main points. South Africa seeing more cases of Omicron subvariant, monitoring it. Storm expected to glaze Pennsylvania, New England in ice. Christian school teacher fired over nasty anti-Asian rant. As Omicron peaks, the US healthcare system is left broken beyond repair. 14-year-old Jamaican-born girl shot and killed in Canada. FEMA preparing for evolving natural disasters. Stay tuned. Coming up, it's Miss Jenny Campbell with our news commentary and Dr. David Carr with health and wellness. Good evening. I'm Jenny Campbell. Welcome to MTM News Commentary. As was reported in the news earlier, another child has been brutally murdered, this time in Canada. The murder of children anywhere at all in the world is savage and senseless and must be condemned by all. Murders in any society must be addressed and those who are guilty must be brought to book if countries are to thrive and people experience true prosperity. Under the Convention on the Rights of the Child, every child has a right of survival. Survival and safety of our children are primarily the responsibility of parents and guardians with the tenfold support of governments. Safety of citizens is the first responsibility of governments. In 2019 alone, 7.4 million children died generally. In 2020, another 5 million met their deaths. A large number of these were brutally murdered. Latin America, the continent of Asia, the Middle East, and even the United States and Russia have been listed among the top 10 places where large numbers of children meet violent deaths annually. In the Caribbean and some countries on the African continent, the murder of children has been a regular item in the newscasts over the years. In Nigeria in particular, the terrorist organization Boko Haram has been in the business of kidnapping and murdering innocent children for some time. Children have been the victim of hate crimes and reprisal killings right across the globe. Tales of child sacrifice have emerged in countries and even in the Caribbean. The killing of children for any reason speaks to a level of depravity that is beyond comprehension. There is a saying that children are the future, but if we are to accept this as true, the murder of our children is a direct and deliberate assault on the future of our people. It is a deliberate and direct attack on godliness. It is a disregard for the promises of God. It is warfare against God. In Genesis 13, God said to Abram, open your eyes, look around, look north, look south, east and west. Everything you see, the whole land spread out before you, I will give to you and your children forever. I'll make your descendants like dust. Counting your descendants will be as impossible as counting the dust of the earth. The shedding of the blood of the innocent, I can tell you, invites the very opposite of hope and prosperity. It invites an atmosphere of wickedness, hopelessness, wretchedness, persistent poverty, immorality, and disaster that cannot even be explained with human understanding. No nation can hope for true prosperity 
while attacking the foundations of its own future. No country with a high level of murder of the innocent can expect true prosperity. My God, our Father, please keep us free from evil powers. Thank you for joining me for this commentary. Welcome to another health and wellness segment. Hi, I'm Dr. David Carr. Anxiety is a normal emotion. It's your brain's way of reacting to stress and alerting you of potential danger ahead. Everyone feels anxious now and then. For example, you may worry when faced with a problem at work, before taking a test, or before making an important decision. Occasional anxiety is okay, but anxiety disorders are different. They're a group of mental illnesses that cause constant and overwhelming anxiety and fear. The excessive anxiety can make you avoid work, um, avoid social situations that might trigger or worsen your symptoms. Now, there are several types of anxiety disorders. For example, general anxiety disorder, where you feel excessive or unrealistic worry and tension with little or no reason. Nor panic disorder, where you feel sudden intense fear that brings on a panic attack. During a panic attack, you may break out in a sweat, have chest pain, and have a pounding heartbeat. Sometimes you may feel like you're choking or you're having a heart attack. The main symptom of anxiety disorder is excessive fear or worry. Anxiety disorders can also make it hard to breathe, sleep, stay still, and concentrate. Your specific symptoms depend on the type of anxiety disorder you have. However, common symptoms include panic, fear, and uneasiness, feelings of panic, doom, or danger, sleep problems, being cold, sweaty, numb, or tingling hands or feet, breathing faster and more quickly than normal, and having heart palpitations, also thinking about a problem over and over again and unable to stop thinking about it, inability to concentrate or intensely or obsessively avoiding feared objects or places. Now, some things can also make you more likely to develop an anxiety disorder. These are called risk factors. Some risk factors you can change, some you can. Now, let's focus on a few. Now, if you have a history of mental disorder, for example, depression raises your risk of having an anxiety disorder. Living through a traumatic event increases the risk of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, which can cause panic attack. Negative life events, for example, losing a parent early in childhood can increase your risk for anxiety disorder. Also, severe illnesses or chronic health condition, now constant worry about your health or the health of a loved one or caring for someone who is sick can cause you to feel overwhelmed and anxious. Also, substance abuse, the use of alcohol and illegal drugs makes you more likely to get an anxiety disorder. Some people also use these substances to hide or ease anxiety symptoms. Now, there are many treatments to reduce and manage the symptoms of anxiety disorder. Usually people with anxiety disorder take medicine and go to counseling. Treatments include medication. Now there are several types of drugs that are used to treat anxiety disorders. Remember to talk to your doctor or psychiatrist about the pros and cons of each medicine to decide which one is best for you. Now medications include antidepressants or your doctor may prescribe psychotherapy. Now this is the type of counseling that helps you to learn how your emotions affect your behaviors. Now, it is sometimes called talk therapy. A trained mental health specialist listens and talks to you about your thoughts and feelings and suggests ways to understand and manage them and your anxiety disorder. Now, these tips can help you control or lessen your symptoms. Let's focus on a few. Learn about your disorders. The more you know, the better prepared you will be. Stick to your treatment plan. Don't use alcohol and recreational street drugs. Substance abuse increases your risk of anxiety disorders. Eat right and exercise. Remember, brisk aerobic exercises like jogging and biking help release brain chemicals that cut stress and improve your mood. Get better sleep. Get together with friends and seek support. Some people find it helpful and uplifting to talk to others who are experiencing the same symptoms and emotions. Remember to always seek medical care from your doctor if you are having anxiety issues. Now, thank you for joining me for another health and wellness segment as we continue on the journey of obtaining, maintaining, and restoring good health. 
Please see my contact information on your screen and remember to follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at Dr. David Carr and on Facebook at Dr. David S. Carr. Send any questions you may have to my email address at drdavidescar at gmail.com. Join us next time and remember, God desires us to be prosperous and to be in good health, even as our souls prosper. Now stay tuned. Coming up, we have Elisa Clark Edwards with Personal Development Trends and Camila Kelly with Entertainment News. Personal development trends, where we encourage you to passionately and persistently pursue your purpose. This week, we will be talking about self reflection. Why is it important and what are some of its benefits? Getting caught up in the busyness of our daily life can make it challenging to turn inward and reflect on our thoughts and feelings. But introspection or self reflection can spark insight which can alter the way we see ourselves and those around us. Self-reflection means taking the time to look both more deeply into yourself and more broadly at the external forces that are shaping your life. It is the discipline of taking time out to examine your thoughts, emotions, behavior, motivation, perspective, and desires. Self-reflection can help you to develop emotional intelligence, increase your confidence, strengthen your integrity, strengthen your relationships, learn to make smarter and sounder decisions, gain insight about optimizing your skill set. Personal reflection allows you to analyze your life from a macro level and also from a micro level. At a macro level, you can evaluate the overall trajectory of your life. You can see where you're headed, determine whether you're happy with the direction, and make adjustments as necessary. At the micro level, you can evaluate your responses to particular circumstances and events. So what are some of the benefits of self-reflection? Self-reflection allows you to take a step back and gain perspective on what matters and what can be ignored. It also allows you to process events and achieves clarity on them. Number two, it helps you to respond more effectively. Most of the time, we simply react to whatever circumstances that come our way. This can lead us to saying and doing things that we will regret. When we're in a reactive mode, we don't take the necessary time to consider our actions and words. Personal reflection allows you to consider the consequences of your words and actions. It also enables you to consider the best, most effective, and the most helpful way to treat a given situation. It promotes learning and understanding. When we go through life without pausing to reflect and think, we don't learn or gain a deeper understanding of life. We simply move from one thing to the next, never pausing to consider what valuable lessons we might learn. Self-reflection, on the other hand, enables us to evaluate and process what we have experienced. It allows us to think deeply and ponder the meaning of circumstances, emotions, and motivations. It enables us to live holistic, integrated, and healthy lives. There are many ways to self-reflect. It can take the form of meditation, journal writing, reading, taking a walk in nature, just to name a few. Self-reflection is very important, and it is an essential part of personal development. So take some time to reflect. I can guarantee you that it will do you a world of good when you're doing this exercise. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We hope that you found the information to be quite valuable. For more personal development trends and insight, feel free to visit my website at millionhairbeauty.com where you learn more about our outreach arm, The Beauty of Growth. It's a personal development initiative for the nation's youth. 
Looking forward to seeing you next week. Welcome to this week's lifestyle and entertainment segment. I'm Camelia Kelly. So last week, we featured the first of our two-part series on the 62nd Keswick Convention. And wow, we all enjoyed the messages. This week, we will feature highlights from their youth night. So if you thought it was for the young persons only, it was also for the young at heart. Persons like Reverend Goddy Goddy, Gifted Hands Ministry, and other worshipers. Oh my word. Let's take a look. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, massive and crew, as you know it, I'm your host for this evening, yeah man, the MC, Dexter Johnson Jr., yeah man, from Jamaica Youth for Christ. Listen, young people, we are here, and we are here just to stand strong and steadfast, yeah man, as we are here just to lift up the name of Jesus. We're all one in Jesus, just as Keswick says. We have uh, special performances from Trevelle Clark Wine. Yeah, man, gifted youth ministry, and and more so, Reverend Gaddy Gaddy, you feel my listen. It's gonna be a good night tonight. <laughs>
you for tuning in with us for the Erudite News Hour, MTM TV's news magazine. On behalf of all of us here at MTM TV, have a great evening. See you next time.